Hello everybody, I'm so glad you are here. My channel is all about art journal, mixed media painting, collage, assemblage and anything else that sparks my interest. In case you don't know me, I'm Bea Group, and I love to inspire you. Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and if you are new here, I'm glad you are here. So today it's going to be a slightly different um, video. As you can see, there is a lot of stuff on the table because I want to talk about art supplies and tools from the bin, the trash, upcycle, recycle, whatever you want to call it. There are several different names for the same idea, I guess. And I'm by, by no means I'm the only one who is doing that or has invented that. I'm just telling you what works for me and uh, maybe I can give you an idea or two. Anyway, so as I said, I have a lot of stuff here. Uh, let's start just with the first. Now, I do like cornflakes, or it's actually cornflakes is the only thing I like, but there are also those um, other cereals out there. They come in a bag like that, and that's actually silicone paper, so it is perfect for doing different things. Like when I do mount my papers to a cradle board, I use that as a protection against the gel medium because nothing sticks to that. So means I can peel off anything from this silicone type paper. So uh, every time when I have a new package, I make sure that I open it up really neatly. And then I'm going to cut along here and cut along here, which I'm actually going to do right now. And then I have a big piece of a non-stick material to do all kind of things. And um, yeah, so I just cut off this part here. I want as a big piece as possible. whole sheet to work on which I really like. Then we all have either kitchen paper rolls or toilet paper rolls. Some people I know have problem with that but go for the kitchen paper rolls instead. I use it to make pockets. So those are pockets made from those cardboard rolls. Just an idea for you. And then I make little books out of that. Not just the kitchen roll I keep. I also keep all kind of boxes from the kitchen food boxes. Like, yeah, it looks really bad now. It's mostly cookies and chocolate. But I do have others too, just saying. <laughs> anyway, so that's what I keep. To make colorful art journals and this actually is going to be a class a zoom live class in January 2021 where I show you how I make this really easy fun colorful journals so I can see here and, and I don't cover up everything so I'm sure that was a medication box so just doesn't have just to be sweets like I have here now. It looks really bad, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, so that's the thing I keep. I do keep those clear food. There were actually blueberries in here, so I keep this to store stuff. And I keep especially just the clear ones so I can actually see what it is in my boxes. It's about two or three years ago I switched everything to clear boxes in my shelves because if I have a, a nice cardboard board or something like that with a nice pattern I have no idea what it is in and I forgot about so if I have a clear box I see it all the time and can think okay maybe I should do that's gonna be later now paper bag I turn them into art journals. You have already seen me working in this art journal. So 
I really do work in those art journals. I'm not just making them. And I do have a brand new one. Uh, there is a um, tutorial over in my paid blog, Mixed Media and More, on Monday over on my website. I will have put the link up here and into the description below. So that's a brand new art journal which I made, made from these brown bags. I do have really fancy ones, but the plain brown bags works as well. So that's another thing I do with recycled items. I do keep all those misprints and those uh, letters which uh, are in my mailbox. I keep all those and use it as a scrap piece of paper to glue on things and things like that. Uh, I also use old catalogs and uh, use it as a glue book. I do keep plastic parts from packaging and I'm going to show you a little bit later what I do. I keep even the wrappers from the magazines and use them before I toss them and I'm going to show you a sample. Then I do go through magazines and cut out sayings and words. I do keep those invitation cards. Obviously this ribbon was used already so I'm gonna use it. Sometimes when the, you have t-shirts and they have those uh, ribbons to, to um, facilitate the hanging on the hangers, the, I cut those off because I don't know how other people do, but they are always peeking out when I'm wearing those t-shirts. So I cut those ribbons out, but I also keep those. Sometimes they have really nice ribbons in there. Uh, just saying you could keep those. Those who follow me since a while know I like my fashion catalog. And I actually also do order from this company, just saying. But um, any fashion catalog you can use for making tags or ATCs or gluing into your collage uh, in your art journal it's the ideas are endless now to prove you that I really use those things I'm gonna do a tag similar like that which was something like that now I think I'm gonna do two tags with you and show you how I turn trash to treasure so, okay, I'm back. I have a little bit more room than before to actually work. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm first going to show you what I use my plastic thingy for. And um, I have several uses for that. Sometimes I make like little windows for, for some um, tags or cards or whatnot. And sometimes I make my own stencils. And that's what I'm going to do now. I just cut myself a piece. Now you could obviously use a craft knife and make uh, forms, whatever you want. I also use my <coughs> punches to make a little stencil the way I like it. Really easy. And yes, you actually could keep those flowers for another project. Maybe I'm going to do that. And they just fly. I don't know why, but they always do that. So I'm thinking I'm happy with that stencil. Now, I think I'm going to make like two cards out of this. I mean, two tags out of this. So I'm simply going to fold it and using a bone folder and first I'm going to cut my corners before I cut it apart and I use the second piece to make a somewhat similar corner here you could 
measure it I'm gonna eyeball it and making a hole if you don't have uh, something like that you actually could use just the pokey tool Now with this tag I have covered up both sides but for the sake of the video I only gonna do one, page, uh, one side so it is a little bit quicker. Now I use first of all I'm gonna use some gesso. I'm going to use a very covering, very opaque paint, just that it covers up. If you don't have those, uh, add a little bit of white to your paint, so white always covers up pretty much. What I also use is are those lid from yogurt or cottage cheese or whatever. I use that instead of pellets. For my next step I'm gonna need a little bit of a diluted paint. And that's what my magazine wrappers come in now. I'm gonna add a little bit of splotches all... Oh, I forgot. I should first spray a little bit. Now what I use those plastic foils for is to give, give some texture. So I place it on and I make wrinkles as many as I can. And I use this technique also on my canvases. It's not just for crafting. So I waited about one to two minutes and I don't know whether you can see it but it has a cool texture now. Now I'm gonna use the heat tool to heat set it. Okay it is dry again now you could use another acrylic paint. I decided I go for uh, some distressing just just for a variation. But if you don't have any ink, you could use an other color and use one of those cosmetic sponge. Now while I'm at, I'm also going to do the edges. I like to give a little bit of a border with here with the distressing. Sometimes I use a marker. Now I wanted to show you something else. Uh, I do use them uh, over and over again. And sometimes you have a little bit of leftover of acrylic paints, but instead of uh, rinsing it through the sink, I rather let it dry and then peel it off. It is much better for the environment if you um, toss it this way. And some some people I know they actually keep those skins, acrylic skins. That's what they basically are and incorporate it again in, in their paintings. Why not? I try to make me a little bit room <laughs> again. It is funny how those table overs sh shrink while you are working. <laughs> just, just kidding. They are not shrinking. We have too much stuff. So, as I said, I keep the catalogs and um, 
I just go through. Sometimes I go look for little borders. And I'm actually thinking here I'm going to add a little border because I like that pattern. We'll see. But then I'm also looking for figures I want to use. Now I need obviously something with a little bit of contrasting color, so blue-green isn't the best choice, I guess. And then the size has to be correct too. Hmm. What about the orange-red lady? Work. So I think I go for her. I'm even going to use that word. So when I'm cutting out those things, I do cut off things which are too complicated. Nobody going to see that. Of course I could write those things myself, but I think it is fun finding stuff and giving a new meaning. <laughs> I'm not convinced with that, so I'm not going to use that. Now to glue on, you know, we use a simple glue stick. And of course I had ink on my fingers so I have it on my paper. Oh well. Now of course I would have to do the back side too but uh, I'm just gonna paint it like with the other one. Now I'm looking for my pokey tool. Here it is. Okay. How much do I need? I don't want too much. So the only thing I have bought was the acrylic paint and the distress ink and the glue stick. And of course this tool. So it doesn't always have to be the newest and the shiniest. Sometimes just looking through your bins you find material which you can use to make. Some cool tags or ATCs or mail art postcards. There are so many possibilities. I hope you enjoyed and I hope to see you soon again. Take care. Bye.